It's like I go to talk and the words just leave my brain. As Taylor Swift once said, hi. <laughs> That's, that's true. Did she win a Grammy for that? Mm. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Cassidy. Thanks so much for watching. We're going to be tier ranking some popular romance book tropes. I literally got one comment on my last YouTube video that I should do this and I was like, done. I'll do it just for you. So that's what we're doing in today's video. I've never done a tier ranking video before. I think because I've always been intimidated by the like actual tier ranking. Like I don't, I didn't understand how the other booktubers were doing it, but it's really, it's, it's not that difficult. I realized. So let's get right into it. I have my laptop here and I'm just going to screen record the tier ranking so you can like go along with me and see what I'm doing. So first we should just go over the categories. Like, what, what are the tiers? So in first place, we have absolutely eat it up. Like, I'm, I'm devouring that. You know what I mean? Like, I love this trope. And then under that, we have I'll read it every time. Like, it's good, and I'm going to keep reading it. And then in the middle, we have go, girl, give us nothing. Because it's like, it's just not giving. Go, go girl, girl, give us, us nothing. nothing. Ah! <laughs> like, it's, it's neutral. It's not anything. And then under that, we have, I wish I could give you a zero, but I can't. So I give you a one. It's so bad, I wanna give you a zero, but that's not possible. So I give you a one. Because it's not so bad that it's like the bottom, but it, it's pretty close, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's almost there. And then the last one we have, death. To all of them. Dare you, Mr. Spears. You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh, like, I never, I never want to read these tropes. I never want to see them. Get them out of my sight. Death. So I think we have 31 tropes. I'm not going to read all of them before we start this because that would take up way too much time. So we're just going to read them as we put them into the categories. Okay, so first up we have love triangle. I hate to say it, but I'm going to put it in give us nothing because I just don't know how I feel like I'm just not into it I just it's not like I despise it but I'm not actively seeking out books with that trope so yeah it's gonna go right in the middle for me okay next up childhood friends to lovers I guess I guess I'll read that no I don't know I want to say I would read it every time but sometimes I don't know I feel I feel like I have to put this in give us nothing because I think childhood friends to lovers is different than just friends to lovers. You know what, for now, it's just gonna go and give us nothing. I need to think on this one. Okay, next up we have small town romance, and I have mixed opinions on this because I didn't think I liked a small town romance until I started reading a cowboy romance, like Elsie Silver, you know what I mean? The Chestnut Spring series. They're all small town romances that I absolutely ate up, but usually I'm like, get that away from me, I don't like it. But I feel like I'm changing my mind on it because now I, th I do think I like a small town romance. It's like, you know, I feel like a lot of times they give Hallmark like cheesy, cheesy rom-com. But you know what? I do, I do think I would read that. Yeah, I'll read that every time. Yeah, I like that. Okay, next up we have road trip romance. And I gotta say, I, I like this one. You know what? I'm gonna say it, it's give us nothing because again i like it but i don't think that i would read it every single time i see it in a book but then again like emily henry gives road trip and i love emily henry but it's not one of my favorite tropes like if i were thinking of one of my favorite tropes like this this doesn't come to mind so you know what road trip just give us nothing okay next up we have only one bed this one this one for me I eat this up like I it's going right on the top absolutely love when they show up to the hotel and there's only one one room and one bed they have to share a bed and then the other person's like like one of them is like I'll sleep on the floor it's fine and the other one's like no like it's a big bed we can share it like we don't have to touch I'll put a pillow in between us and then they end up cuddling eat it up eat it up i i love it next up 
slow burn eat it up eat it up every time because you know what sometimes as much as i love a steamy romance like i'm here for the spicy scenes sometimes the spiciest scenes are when it's like the brief hand touch or like they brush like a shoulder or something like i am here for that i love it so much and let's not forget about i'm only thinking about this because i was just talking about it but let's not forget about like bridgerton the slow burn and next up enemies with benefits to lovers eat it up i read oh what was that book called okay well i'm an idiot the the book i was thinking about is literally called enemies with benefits so good like when they know they hate each other but there's still like this sexual chemistry between the two of them i'm eating it up i'm like yes 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 because i know they're gonna get together but like the time when they still hate each other so good because then they can't fight the chemistry they have i just so good love immediately eating it up okay next up unrequited love i guess i just why would you why would you want to chase someone and even if it is the situation in a love triangle where the one person is chasing after someone but then ends up with the other person i still i mean i rated love triangle give us nothing so unrequited love for me feels like it should be lower than that like just give me a one because i don't want it i don't i don't know okay single parent and nanny this is a tricky one for me because I don't love a single parent trope, but I read the newest book in the Windy City series, and that was Single Dad and Nanny, and I loved that book. Ah, I don't know. I don't I feel like it needs to be done in a certain way. Like if it's done well, then I like it. Okay, I, maybe I'm realizing I do like it more than I thought I did. But I, I feel like I want to put it in, I will read it every time, but I won't. I won't read it every time. But it doesn't really give nothing. I feel like it needs to go somewhere in the middle here. But for now, we'll just, we'll just put it in, I will read it every time. Because I do like it. But it's not my favorite. Insta-love can absolutely get out of here and die death to all of it because i read wreck the halls by tessa bailey and that was a one-star read first of all but that was insta love and i i just hate it i feel like it ruins the rest of the story like i just feel like it's not believable that you look at someone for like one second and you're like oh my god we're in love with each other i love him no where's the rest of the story i, I just i don't want it i don't want it no okay workplace romance i gotta say i will read this every time and i think the first workplace romance i read was sally thorn the hating game and i loved that book and that was when i was first getting back into reading and i think that was also that's also an enemies to lovers and i love an enemies to lovers so i think i'm gonna go yeah, I will read this every time, but also I do think it gets a little tricky when it's like a boss and then they're like employee. That's weird. But if they're just co-workers and it's like a workplace romance and they have to be like sneaky at work, I like that. Okay, next up, if you know me, you know that I love a sports romance and I will eat it up every time. I don't care if it's Hockey. Hockey was like what I got into with sports romance, but then I like had this weird obsession with F1 because who's the author of the F1 series? Lauren Asher, the Dirty Air series. I read those and loved it, but the kicker is that I actually didn't know what an F1 car looked like at all. So beats me what I was picturing in my head when I was reading like the actual racing scenes. Couldn't tell you, but i i love a sports romance and i think it's anna huang that's coming out with a like soccer romance and i cannot wait i'm so excited i will read sports romance every time every time love it okay accidental pregnancy death death to all of them i hate 
reading a book when it's like the beginning of the book and the characters like hook up once and then the girl gets pregnant and then they're like they have to stay together or whatever i hate that i i just hate it in general like even if it's at the end of the book and the couple like the girl gets pregnant i'm like we didn't need to add that like they no they could have had a happily ever after without getting pregnant i and maybe i'm projecting because i don't want kids but I don't like it. I just feel like it's so unnecessary and we could think of so many other tropes to put in a book. Okay, Grumpy Sunshine. I, I will, I, do, do I put it in, I will eat it up or I'll read it every time because you know what? No, I eat it up because there's nothing better than reading a guy who he's like, he hates everyone, like hates everyone except for her. I love it. And that's like grumpy sunshine even if it's like reverse where the girl is like the grumpy one and then the guy's like the golden retriever like happy like sunshine i love it like i'm thinking of twisted love i'm thinking of the fine print which is like dreamland billionaire series give me a grumpy man except in real life like i think like if my boyfriend if he like hated the world except for me i'd be like what is wrong with you like let's let's get a little happier let's let's do something but in a book i eat it up okay this this trope is disgusting like there's something messed up no i'm not gonna no there's not something messed up with you if you like it but come on that's disgusting Step Brothers. i only included this because i saw this trope put in other people's like tier ranking trope videos and the only book that i can think of because i've never read a book with this trope but the book that i'm thinking of is credence and the girl like gets with her step uncle and her step brothers disgusting i actually can't think of a reason why i would go out of my way to read a book with this in it or how i would enjoy this trope there's how many guys in this world and you have to choose your stepbrother whom you're related to no okay second chance romance hear me out i don't love it and slightly controversial take on my part because Here's the thing, I did love Happy Place by Emily Henry, which is a second chance romance, but it's also a fake dating trope, which I love. Like they're pretending to be together in front of their friends. And I think that's the reason why I liked it. Usually I do not like a second chance romance. I feel like, and I was telling my friend about this, I, I feel like because the two characters have already dated and like we, the reader, like haven't really seen that progression of their relationship we've missed out on like all of the first and like all the like the things that like make a romance to me like so good like we've missed their first kiss and like whatever and then we get it like the second time around and i just feel like it's not like they've already done it before it's just like oh like i realized how much i miss this i i, I don't know i'm gonna give it a one not it's not my favorite at all student teacher first of all not legal um death to all of them. I have never read a romance with student teacher, but I did read Frieda McFadden's The Teacher, which is a thriller. And even just reading those scenes like made me so, 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 so uncomfortable. I did not like it. I can't imagine actually reading a romance where like that was the whole plot of the book. And I'm trying to think if that would like change for me, if it may be like the student, this is so messed up, but maybe if the student was in college and it was like their professor, but still that's, that's not right. And it's definitely like a power dynamic there going on. So still, still not cool. So yeah, I think maybe, maybe just kill them all. Like don't, let's not do it. Let's not do it anymore. Okay, age gap. I have some thoughts on this one because I, I think if it's done well, then I like it. But sometimes um, it's not done well and then I hate it. So I'm gonna go give us nothing because sometimes it can be weird. And the book that I'm thinking of is the newest book in the Chestnut Spring series, which is Hopeless, which is about Bo and Bailey. And I just remember reading this book and thinking about how weird it was that Bo was so much older than her and he would always like in his inner like dialogue that's all he was talking about was like how he had to like teach her things like, like sexually 
and he would just like sit at the bar and like watch her and watch over her and i remember thinking like how weird that was and i usually was like i was like eating up the chestnut spring series but that book did not do it for me because of the age gap it was so weird like i think if the age gap isn't weird like that then i like it if it's if it's not like in a gross creepy way where it's just like an old like an older guy being a creepy predator <laughs> like then it's fine but it has to be it has to be done in a in a certain way okay marriage of convenience i read it every time i love it like i know it, it's so predictable like every time you know they get together for some some reason wh whatever they're both kind of questioning like is this real is this fake when they like start getting real feelings for each other and then there's like some third act breakup and then they get together at the end and like they're like oh it was real i don't care i don't care i love it and i'll keep loving it okay bodyguard i just read the bodyguard by Catherine center and it was so cute and i loved it and i love that there was like a gender like i love that the girl in that book was the bodyguard and the guy was like famous person and she was protecting him but i i love it i I will read it every time. I don't like eat it up, but I I do enjoy a bodyguard romance, even when it is the guy being the bodyguard because it's just so cute every time. Okay, Force Proximity. Again, I love it. I do. Like it kind of goes along with like the sh having to share like one bed. In a more general sense, I just love when two characters, even though they might not like each other, then they're kind of like for like it's just so good and i eat that up i'm so sorry i'm like eating up all of these tropes but billionaire i love it the dreamland billionaire series i think was the first billionaire series that i read and it was so so good i was obsessed with it i'm sorry there's nothing better than the guy like it's like they're going on a date and he's like go pick out a dress like here's my card and she can spend however much like i i eat it up i love it so much i just love a billionaire romance and lauren asher also came out with another billionaire series like the lake something billionaires oh lakefront billionaires and the new book comes out in june and i cannot wait the cover is so pretty okay fake dating i will read it every time again it's like one of those where i know what's gonna happen like they're gonna fake date and then they're gonna realize that they do like each other but i just i don't care how predictable it is i love it so much okay next up friends with benefits to lovers you know what i don't know if i like this one that much i feel like i'm gonna go just give us nothing because it just like makes me mad like i'm like you guys are already friends and you're adding like the physical aspect to it so just date like i it just like frustrates me i'm like why i don't understand so for that reason, give us nothing. Next up, brother's best friend, love. Along with that, best friend's brother, eat that one up too. I love it because you like don't want your best friend or like the brother to find out. So you gotta be like a little sneaky. I'm gonna go eat it up because I love, I love the tension of not wanting the brother to find out. And then when the brother does find out, then he's like so mad. There's like a little, you know, third act falling out with the brother or like the, the brother and his best friend, like have a little falling out. Okay, next up we have single parent. I know I put single parent and nanny under I will read every time, but single parent, like I refuse to read the Lucy score series because it's about like a single parent and I don't know why but something about having a nanny in there like makes it different for me when it's like the romance between them but I just I don't like want to read about a kid and I'm so sorry usually I don't want to read about a kid so I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it there I don't know that's a hard one okay next up academic rivals I'm gonna go I will read every time and along with academic rivals I think just like like I know this isn't academic okay but in divine rivals i ate that up like they're not in school obviously but they're working at the newspaper i just any sort of like rivalry like when they're enemies i love it so much because i know that they're perfect together and it, it's so good okay here we go enemies to lovers eat it up every time that enemies to lovers is probably my favorite trope of all time i will read just about any book 
with enemies to lovers in it. And every time I love it. Okay, right person, wrong time. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of feel like I'm gonna put this in, wish I could give you a zero, but I'm gonna give you a one. I just think it's so stupid. Like we know what's gonna happen. We know they're meant to be together anyways. Like I just, I don't know. It's just so annoying. Sometimes like when it's the wrong time, like one person will like be in a relationship and then realize like they shouldn't be with them and then go to the other person. I just, I don't know. I just like, I don't like it. Okay, forbidden romance, yes. And I don't mean in like, oh, Romeo and Juliet, no. In a sports romance when the guy falls for the girl but then he doesn't realize that it's like the coach's daughter, like something like that, I eat that up. I love that. Okay, last one, going out on a banger of death to all of them, soulmates. Hate it. I just hate it. Like I know, I, d I don't know why I don't like it, but I don't. I think because it's like not believable to me. I think it just comes across cringy to me sometimes. Like I don't hate it if you kind of like know their soulmates, but they don't like say it. But when the characters like say it explicitly, I am like, no, no, don't, we don't need to go that far. We don't need to say all that. So maybe, okay, you know what? I won't say death to all of them. I'll say, just give it a one. Oh my gosh. Okay. We, we did all of them and I've officially completed my first tier list. So let me know what you guys think if you agree or if you disagree or like what your favorite tropes are. This is so much fun. I want to do another tier ranking video. So let me know like what else you'd want me to do some tier ranking of. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.